Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss the solutions to your practice class questions on rock joint analysis. We will be using the rock science dip software for this purpose. We will start by importing the data that was provided to you in Moodle into our software. This data set represents a set of measurements of dip and dip direction of a given rock mass. So to start with, let's copy this data and bring it over into our rock science dips. We start doing this by opening a new file and we directly paste our data into this. Once we import our data in this way, we can visualize them in several different ways. We can look at the contour plot of the poles of our joint planes or we can actually visualize the great circles corresponding to our joint planes. So if this stereo net is empty, you look at the plot options on your left hand side and select the checkbox corresponding to grid data planes. This will show you all the planes as great circles that correspond to all the data that you imported. Now this basically covers the first two questions of your practice class question set. And now let's move on to the third one. So in the third question, you were asked to identify joint sets. Now, looking at this data, which are given measurements, we can see that there are there seem to be two major joint planes in our given rock mass. So we can start by defining sets that correspond to these two major planes. To do that, we will visualize our poles. We might need to uncheck our grid data planes and we go to sets, add set window and draw a window around these poles that they encompass several poles. So this set we can call it plane 1 and as you can see a mean pole and a mean great circle corresponding to our joint set was drawn when we defined our set. We can further define another set corresponding to the other set of poles like so. And we can call this plane 2. Now we have the two mean planes corresponding to our measurements. Our next task is to find the mean dip and dip direction of our mean joint planes. To do this, we right click on our legend and select major planes from the list given. This will give you the trend and plunge of the poles corresponding to our major planes. Now if you want to see the dip and dip direction, you will have to go to analysis, project settings and make sure that dip and dip direction is selected and say OK. So now we have our dip and dip direction for our main joint planes. So for plane 1, given by this great circle, our mean dip and dip direction is 60 and 70 respectively. And for plane 2, given by this great circle, our dip and dip direction are 35 and 201 respectively. So our next question is to find the line of intersection of these two joint planes. So from your lecture, you may recall that the intersecting point of two great circles denote the line of intersection of two planes. Now the way we can calculate this is we could go to tools, intersection calculator, line from two planes because we are, we are inputting two planes and we want to find the line of intersection. And here we need to select the poles of our two planes. So we can approximately select the pole for plane 1 
and select the pole for in an approximate manner for plane 2 like so. Once we get this window we can then adjust our values to match exactly what was given here. So our dip and deep direction for plane 1 would be 60 and 70. That for plane 2 is 35 and 201. That gives us the trend and plunge of our line of intersection. Remember that a line is denoted by its trend and its plunge. So that answers the first part of your practice class questions. We will now look at conducting a kinematic analysis for the second part of your practice class questions. Before we do this, we need to make sure that we change our visualization method from poles where we selected our windows into our dip vectors of our planes. To do this, we go to this icon and change over to dip vectors. Now these points correspond to the dip vectors of our two planes. Now we are ready to conduct our kinematic analysis. To do this, we go to analysis and select kinematic analysis. And then we select display kinematic analysis and move this window so that we can get a better view of our stereo net. Now in our question, we are told that we are to excavate an east facing slope and we are to analyze for a slope angle of 60 and 70 degrees. So an east facing slope would be dipping towards east which means the dip direction would be 90 degrees. So we say 90 degrees here and we we'll start with a 60 degree slope and we are also told that our lateral limits are 30 so we we'll leave it there and friction angle also we we'll leave it at 30. Now the east facing slope is denoted by this orange great circle and the red shaded region is our critical region for planar failure subject to our lateral limits. Now what this means is that if our dip vectors fall into this region our slope is likely to fail. Now the dip vector of our main main plane does not seem to be in this region and when we consider all our data points we see that 30% of our dip vectors fall within this region. So the likelihood of failure is not very high. Now let's see what happens when we increase our slope angle. As you can see our critical region becomes larger and at an angle of 70 degrees almost all our dip vectors fall inside the critical region and our likelihood of failure becomes very high with almost 95% of our data points falling within the critical region. So an angle dipping angle of 70 is not suitable for this given situation and therefore we would have to recommend an angle of 60 or even less than 60 for a slope for the excavation of the slope to be safe. So our next question is to analyze for wedge sliding for a slope of an angle 70 degrees dipping southwards. So we select wedge sliding from this option and we input our properties slope dip is given to be 70 degrees and the dip direction since it is south facing would be 180 degrees. We leave our friction angle as 30. Now just like in the previous case the red shaded region denotes our critical region and any intersecting points lying within this region would be considered to be critical. Now you can see that there are several points highlighted in red that are falling within this red region. Now remember that we imported several data planes into our software and each of these planes may also be intersecting. These points denote those planes with, within that group that are intersecting. Now if these measurements are actual measurement error and not actual planes, this would not be accurate. If these measurements represent two large joint planes as we have given here, our analysis should involve this intersecting point and not these ones. So to make to ensure that we do that, 
from this window we select mean set planes now our analysis is conducted only for this intersecting main intersecting point constructed from our mean planes and as for wedge failure bit from this analysis we see that it's zero percent because our intersecting point or the line that's intersecting lies outside our critical region but does that mean that the slope is safe if you note that the dip vectors of our other plane of plane 2 lie in this region so we might actually want to check the likelihood of a planar sliding corresponding to this plane so we go back to planar sliding keep the di uh, slope dip as 70 it's the same slope same direction and now we see that with respect to plane 2 all the dip vectors fall in the critical region and we have a hundred percent likelihood of it failing and therefore although the south facing slope will not fail under wedge, fa wedge sliding it is very likely to fail under planar sliding with this joint plane denoted by plane 2 and therefore we can conclude that our south facing slope is not safe. So that concludes the answers to the questions in your practice class for the Rock Science Dip software. And I would also recommend that you get familiar with the other options in this software. So for example, we can also visualize our planes, our mean planes in 3D. We can see the pole concentrations or we can also see the dip vector concentrations. We can also see the line of intersection and so on. If you have any questions with respect to this video or in of stereonic analysis, analysis in general, we can discuss them in our next practice class. Thank you.